Well, if last week in Austin was anything to go by, 2020 gave autumn a miss and went straight from summer to winter, putting a giant damper on a lot of people's desire to hop on a motorcycle, including mine if I'm gonna be honest. I certainly don't enjoy riding in the 30s and 40s, but hey, I don't want to spend all winter cooped up away from my motorcycle. Probably kill me, I'm physically addicted to twisting the throttle and carving a corner. But spite, all I have is a baby's first mechanics toolkit and the 10 millimeter socket is missing, and winter's icy grip causes my manhood to shrivel like a raisin in the sun. If only someone with a wonderful head of hair could create a video explaining in great detail how to extend my riding season for a few weeks, or even better, make it possible to ride all year long. Well, aren't you in luck? Because I'm gonna do just that. Believe it or not, there's a handful of ways that you can still get out there and ride your two-wheeled steed, even in the dead of winter, assuming that there's not a bunch of ice on the ground. If there is, you might as well just skip it and live to ride another day. Trust me, I grew up in Chicago and there's nothing more terrifying than a cabbie on bald tires hitting a patch of ice and spinning out right into you. But on those nicer winter days, you can definitely get out and enjoy your motorcycle, and I'm going to show you just how to do it. It is worth pointing out that everything on this list is additive, meaning that the more of these that you get, the better they'll all work. Some of you might need everything because you live in the frozen wasteland of Minnesota, but others might only need a couple to make it through the cool mornings and warmer afternoons of a Texas winter. I'll leave that judgment call up to you. Jumping right in today, we've got the most obvious thing you can do, and it's get a set of heated grips. I've talked about these before, but they are the single most transformative thing you can do to your motorcycle to make it rideable in the colder months. Heck, maybe even on colder summer mornings if you've only got a set of perforated gloves. There's a few ways you can go with it. If you own a more upmarket motorcycle, chances are you can actually buy a set specifically made for your bike. For example, I just picked up a set for my KTM that integrate directly into the motorcycle cycle and actually require a trip to the dealership in order for them to function properly. These tend to be a little bit more expensive, the one for my KTM was about $200, but having them integrate directly into your bike usually allows for dash lights to turn on and it ensures that when the bike is turned off, the grips turn off and they tend to last a little longer. Remember that grips are, at the end of the day, a wear part and you'll eventually need to replace them. A cheaper option is to get a piggyback system that'll tie into your battery or your ignition if you don't want to worry about running the battery down. Those kits usually run around 100 bucks, but they are 100% universal. You can put them on a TW200 or put them on a Ducati Superleggera, and trust me when I tell you that they are the best money you'll ever spend. You know what's even better though? Winning a motorcycle for free. Not possible, I hear you say. Well, you'd be wrong. We've currently got five motorcycles up for grabs, and maybe a super secret sixth one coming on later this year. If you go over to yammynoob.co, you can get entered to win or sign up to support the series, which will get you a whole bunch of extra goodies on top of that. You'll get access to exclusive weekly live streams, early access to videos, and best of all, you'll be able to join the Discord server. The Discord is like a giant chat room where you can just talk to tons of riders around the world, anytime or anywhere. We've got channels specifically for helping you buy a motorcycle, fixing a bike, or just posting memes or laughing at crusty Hayabusa's. There's plenty of bikeless bros on there too, so if you're worried about being clowned on for not riding, don't be. You'll also be able to hang out with Yammy or I since we're there every day. Join the best community for motorcyclists on the internet by clicking the link down below and heading over to yammynoob.co. Staying at your handlebars, number six is a set of Bark Busters. Unfortunately, this one's only for guys not riding on sport bikes since you're going to have a hard time fitting these underneath the windscreen for your R3, but a set of Bark Busters is a great way to keep the wind off your hands. Wind chill is a very real thing, and according to Noah, at 40 degrees and 60 miles an hour, the real temperature you're experiencing is 25 degrees, enough to get you frostbite in under 30 minutes. A Bark Buster will help keep the wind off the the top of your hands and your fingers to allow the heat from your grips to work more effectively. If you do decide to pick up a set, make sure you get some that are as tall as possible. Your cheapo Amazon ones are usually just one piece of plastic, but an actual set of Bark Busters will typically come with a little expansion piece to make them taller. The more surface area you have in front of your hands, the less wind will actually hit your fingers and the warmer you'll stay. It's also worth pointing out those handlebar mitts you can put over the top of your controls that basically function like sleeves for your bike. These are a Apex Moto Nerd stuff, like we're talking one piece yellow arrow stitch suit with a yellow helmet on a yellow versus X300 levels of nerd here, but they really do work. 
If you're thinking about putting down serious miles in the saddle in the cold, skip the Bark Busters and go straight for these. Number five on today's list is probably going to be the cheapest thing you can add to your cold weather setup, and it's a neck gaiter. If you don't know what this is, it's basically just a little scarf made out of insulating fleece that you put around your neck to keep the wind out. But why is something like that so useful? Well, think about it. Most motorcycle jackets stop at your shoulders and might have a small neckline, but usually they leave at least two inches between the top of the jacket and your helmet. That exposes your main arteries to the cold air, and the faster you go, the worse it gets. A neck gaiter will help keep the wind off your neck and keep the warm air in. Now, I know you don't think you need to run out and spend a whole $15 on one piece of fleece because you have a scarf in the closet that grandma knit you a decade ago. Well, you never wore it growing up, and you're sure as hell not going to wear it now because it's too bulky. Gators are way smaller, and they won't stop you from being able to move your noggin so you can still do your head checks. Just pop on Amazon and get yourself one that's windproof and fleece lined. It'll cost you about as much as a lunch at Chipotle or your next delivery pizza, but it'll help you stay on the bike longer and be more comfortable while you're doing it. While we're on the subject of gear you can wear, number four is a baggy leather motorcycle jacket. Now, I know you don't want to look like some middle-aged overweight cruiser guy and you only wear flashy sport bike gear, but bear with me. A baggy motorcycle jacket is going to have all the pads and reinforcement you'd want from something that in theory is there to help prevent injuries, and it's going to be completely windproof so you don't have to worry about wind chill. If you bought the right jacket, it probably has an inner thermal layer. Yeah, you're just going to want to go ahead and throw that in the closet, because those thermal liners do a half-ass job at keeping you warm, and chances are you already own a better sweater. Hey, that rhymed. When I have to ride in the cold, I wear my Harley jacket with a thick hoodie underneath. And I might look like the Michelin man, but hey, I'm warm and I'm still riding my motorcycle so you can judge me all you want from your card, but deep down you know you'd rather be on your bike. In case you're wondering, those jackets with the hoodies already in them are really just for autumn riding, and the hoodie zips into the jacket the same way a thermal liner does, leaving an uncovered band down your torso. So just chuck that hoodie in the closet and go with an actual sweater. Thing number three you're gonna need if you want to ride in winter is a winter windshield for your motorcycle. Yes, I did just say that your jacket and gaiter were going to help keep the wind from hitting you, but those are really just temporary solutions. Remember the handlebar covers and bark busters we talked about earlier? Well, this is the same concept, but for your torso. You know, that place where all your blood goes when your arms and legs get too cold. Going back to that windshield statistic, if it's 40 degrees outside and you're going 60 miles an hour, you have 30 minutes before the onset of frostbite. But if you keep the wind off your chest, or at least slow it down a little, you'll be comfortable for a lot longer. Whether you get a taller windscreen built specifically for your motorcycle, or you get one of the universal bolt-on windscreens is entirely up to you, but I will say I have had both, and they both worked well enough at getting the wind up over my head. If you're a taller rider, you might need to get one of those little clip-on windscreens to help clear the wind over your head a little bit better, but thankfully those are easy to remove because they can be a little ugly. Number two is heated socks. Yep, you heard me right. They actually do make heated socks. It's basically just like heated grips, but for your feet. You run a wire through the inside of your pants and hook them up to an SAE lead on your motorcycle, and then bask in the all-encompassing warmth. They usually have a little controller on them, or at least the good ones do, so you can change the level of heat that you're getting so you don't roast your little toesies. You can get heated gloves to go with these, but if you're following this guide to a T, you've already got yourself some heated grips, so don't bother dropping the coin. You should also get a set of windproof boots. Usually that means non-perforated leather boots, but you can get some insulated ones. I wouldn't really recommend that though, because imagine trying to ride your motorcycle in the equivalent of snow boots. Just spend the money on getting a nice set of calf height boots and the heated socks and you'll be all set. A word of warning. Don't get the heated insoles for your boots. They only warm the bottom of your feet, and they make it harder to walk around since they don't flex. Also, you have to take them in and out of your boots to charge them, so they're really more of a pain in the butt than anything. Finally, number one on today's list is a pinlock visor. As the temperature drops, the heat from your breath inside your helmet will almost instantly fog up your visor, especially at slower speeds or when you're stopped. A pinlock visor works by trapping a pocket of air between the pinlock and your helmet's face shield and permanently preventing your visor from fogging up. Yes, there are sprays that you can put on your face shield that help, but they require constant reapplication, sometimes multiple times a day. The pinlock is a set it and forget it type of thing that you can install on any face shield. Admittedly, it requires a little bit of modification if your helmet doesn't already have mounting pegs, but trust me, it's worth it. 
If you're looking for a helmet that already has one, the Shoei RF-1200 includes one in the box, and it doesn't exactly wear out, so it'll last the life of the helmet. It definitely helps to be able to see where you're going when you're riding in the cold, and this is the best way to do it. And just like that, you're ready to tackle a winter wonderland. Get out there and ride, my dude, and enjoy that smug sense of superiority knowing that you're out there enjoying your motorcycle when everyone else is inside wishing they could. So, my sweet little squid, this video is actually over, but lucky for you, click on this one right here. You can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam delivering you the motorcycle content you've come to know and love. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll be here waiting for you. You're gonna click on that video.